didn't know what I was getting into, but I popped Lincoln and Jackson too. I didn't mind seeing them fade out of sight. I just knew I'd have some fun last night. Whenever you're in town and looking for a thrill, if Lincoln can't get it, Jackson sure will. Oh, green back, green back down the field. KP's Video News. That's right, folks. It's KP's Video News. And uh, we're just doing what we got to do here. Just got to keep it real and keep it raw. That's right. So these, uh, I was talking about yesterday, I was talking about some cases, cases uh, that was happening in Texas. And these uh, cases uh, keep getting bigger. And the cases I'm talking about are, uh, uh, that I'm talking about are, those cases of, of the coronavirus where uh, that are going up since they open open back up a lot of states and the numbers man the numbers are wow on, on with the story here Texas North Carolina and Arizona are among the states seeing rising numbers of coronavirus cases intensifying concerns they seek to reopen shut economies Texas saw its largest one-day increase in cases Saturday with 1,800 new cases. North Carolina also saw its largest single-day jump on Saturday with 853 new cases. And Arizona reported 462 new cases that day, close to a record high. The seven-day average in new cases in all three states has uh, been rising, according to data compiled by the New by the uh, uh, data that had been compiled and the data the data illustrate the risk of states reopening even amid ongoing outbreaks Texas and Arizona are both re relatively far along in reopening have given the green light to businesses like restaurants and barbershops though they have uh, been cautioned to open with limited capacity and other safety measures North Carolina is far is uh, far down the road toward opening, but it has entered its first phase, allowing retail stores to open with precautions. Texas and Arizona are both led by Republican governors, while North Carolina has a Democratic governor. One reason for the increasing number of cases in all three states is that they are all seeing a significant rise in testing, which means more people carrying COVID-19 are being identified. With more testing, we expect, expect to see more cases. North Carolina Health and Human Services Secretary Mandy Cohen and, and said Monday at the news conference. Still, she called for the increase in her state concerning and noted uh, that as restrictions are being eased, when we see this kind of an increase in case, case count, we also know that we are easing restrictions and folks are moving around more. She said, urging uh, residents to wear face coverings, keep six feet apart, and wash their hands uh, as restrictions lift. Not all states that are reopening are seeing increased numbers of coronavirus cases, and there are significant variations across the country as states move forward with various phases of reopening. Georgia, one of the earliest states to start reopening has not seen a spike in cases and in fact had a slight decrease. Fla uh, Florida similarly has been mostly flat. Yet, even this needs to be taken with some, with some caveats because it takes time for someone with the coronavirus to develop symptoms and get tested. It can take two weeks for new cases to show up in the data. Nationally, there are some hopeful signs of a decline in new cases, but that trend a uh, mass significant regional variation. New York and New Jersey, once uh, by far the epicenter of, of the infections in the United States, have seen significant declines in new cases in recent weeks, but other states like Texas and Arizona are seeing increases. Spokesman for Texas Governor Greg Abbott and Arizona Governor uh, Doug Ducey both pointed to their state's increasing testing as a factor to explain the increases. Both states have fairly low positivity rates on their testing. That percentage of total tests that came back positive, a favorable sign. Rates in both states are about 5%, down significantly from the rates in April. 
North Carolina's positive rate has been steady at about 6%. Texas said about 700 cases on its spike of 1,800 over the weekend came from targeted testing of meatpacking. Anthony Fauci, the government's top infectious disease expert, warned in high-profile Senate testimony last week of serious consequences and spikes in state reopened too soon. Expert also noted, however, that a balance needs to be struck between public health and the economy given that stay-at-home orders cannot last forever. If we are only looking, looking at public health considerations, we would, of course, maintain lockdown indefinitely, but that's not feasible, um, uh, the governor of Texas said. Michael Mina, a professor at, at the Harvard TG Scan School of, of Public Health, said he thinks the country is on the brink of a, a societal collapse if it does not reopen the economy soon, though he noted concerns from a health standpoint. Myself and many of my colleagues are very nervous about the idea of opening up this early without the right pieces in place, but it does not need to happen. One of those key pieces is testing. Ideally, as in uh, countries like South Korea, the number of cases overall would be low enough that the new sparks can be stamped out through rigorous testing and contact tracing around emerging outbreaks. But the situation on those fronts has been improving their still, still weaknesses. While the number of tests nationwide has climbed about 350,000 per day recently, Harvard researchers estimate the country needs to be testing about 900,000 tests per day. And said Ohio Governor Mark DeWine noted the tensions around reopening on Sunday on uh, State of the Nation saying that his state is at a plateau in new cases when he would uh, when he would rather see a decline. This is a really probably the most crucial time, the most dangerous time, because we are opening back up, because we have to open back up, he said, but at the same time, that creates more exposure, more opportunity for this virus to spread. And that's uh, the, the truth of the matter. And so it's like, I don't know, it's a crazy situation, and here's a uh, part two of this. And it's a special report. Death sentence, the hidden coronavirus toll in U.S. jails and prisons. When COVID-19 began tearing through Detroit's county jail system in March, authorities had no diagnostic tests to gauge its spread. But the toll became clear as deaths mounted. One of, uh, one of the sheriff's jail com uh, commanders died. Then a deputy in the medical unit working with Wayne County Jail has now become a death sentence. He said, uh, that's, let me read that again. Working in the Wayne County Jail system has now become a death sentence. The head of the deputy sheriff's union, Randall Crawford, wrote on, uh, uh, as losses mounted. By mid-April, the jail system medical director and one of his doctors had also died from COVID-19 the disease caused by the, the coronavirus. The virus was everywhere, but the jail officials had little sense of what was infecting, uh, who was infecting and spreading it. Tests of inmates and staff needed to determine who should be quarantined to slow transmission was just getting started in the week since. More than 200 staff and inmates have tested positive. The spread was, was rapidly behind the bars in Detroit and also across the nation, according to the analysis of data gathered by Reuters from 20 county jail systems, 10 pri state prison systems, and the Bureau of Prisons, which runs federal penitentiaries. But scant testing and inconsistent reporting from state and local authorities have frustrated efforts to track or contain the spread, particularly in local jails, as figures compiled by the U.S. government appear to undercut the number of infections dramatically in the correctional uh, settings. In May 6th report, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention surveyed 54 and territorial health departments for data confirmed COVID-19 infections in all correctional facilities, local jails, state prisons, and federal prisons 
and detention centers. 37 of those agencies provided data between April 22nd and 28th reported under 5,000 inmate cases. Reuters documented well over three times the CDC's tally of infections, about 17,300 in its far more modest sur survey of local, state, and federal correction facilities conducted about two weeks later. The uh, Reuters survey encompassed jails and prisons holding only 13 percent of more than two million people behind bars nationwide. Wow, that's 17,300 cases and that's only 13 percent of the two, two million people behind bars nationwide. Among state prisons doing uh, mass testing of all inmates, Rhoda said some, some are seeing infection rates of over 65 percent. This is a, this is a bad situation people. And I mean, you know, you got, this is a real, real bad situation. And you know, this, this case right here, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a whole study. I'm going to do a whole thing on this particular case. So stay tuned. I'm, I'm going to come back because this, uh, this case is, this story is so long. I'm going to have to do a whole nother video on this one. Hey, Pete's Video News.